Hey guys, so first I'm going to show you this graphic that I made that uh, kind of explains the entire gospel story because you have to know the gospel story in order to know where sanctification fits in with it. There is going to be a copy of this plus this information that I'm going to kind of scan over that you can either screenshot or go to the link in the bio and um, download and it's in a thing you can just, you know, you can have for free. No big deal. Let's get to it. Okay, we're going to understand the basics. God is holy, man is sinful. They cannot associate unless some change occurs because of God's holiness. It's, it's against his nature to be able to be near sin, okay? God provides a way through his grace. Grace is sending his son as the propitiation for our sins. Man hears and believes the grace story from the Bible. Belief is for the purpose of or for being put into righteousness. Okay, so the reason for belief, righteousness. Understanding grace means confessing that Jesus is the Christ. The person with faith is justified through the confession of Jesus is Lord. The person with faith has Jesus dwelling in their heart. But this kind of faith is an action word, okay? And understanding grace, grace means giving way to the repentance of sin, okay? So grace is the vehicle that allows sin to be forgiven. True faith compels the desire for sanctification, which is effected in baptism. Sanctification is only available through the sacrificial blood of Christ. Sanctification is a setting apart to be properly used as the maker intends and is a prerequisite and a postrequisite with baptism. Sanctified people have an inheritance in the future eternal kingdom of God. Baptism is a washing that is effective is the effective agent that allows the Holy Spirit of God to regenerate a man's soul. Regeneration of the soul allows for the Holy Spirit to renew the man's heart continuously. Re a regenerated person is a righteous person. Only the righteous can enter the kingdom of heaven. Living in a righteous manner leads to or leads into is for the purpose of holiness. Holy living is the process of serving God, conforming to Christ's likeness, and aiming at being blameless in the eyes of God by being obedient to his word. This includes walking in the light, which is the light of Jesus shown to us from scripture, and then the Holy Spirit convicts us into behaviors that match up with that. Avoiding fellowship with the works of darkness is included in righteousness. It also comes with a promise that if we share the light of Jesus, more will be given to us. Living in God's light, being part of the royal priesthood, and our responsibility is, in this position, to proclaim God's praises. As part of the royal priesthood, we have a responsibility to walk in wisdom. Walking in wisdom means carefully and effectively sharing the gospel with the unsaved as led by the Holy Spirit. To be led by the Holy Spirit, we must be walking in the Spirit. Those that walk in the Spirit are the sons of God. Walking in the Spirit includes praise, interacting with other Christians, developing the fruits of the Spirit, keeping your mind focused on the things of the Lord and not the world. To be walking in the Spirit fully is fully submitting to the slavery we willingly subject ourselves to in God. To be used as God sees fit. To bring about the will of the Lord, which is bringing as many to Him as will come. Hope is Paul's one word summary for the glorification and everlasting life that will occur at the end of our version of life here. So once you die or go to heaven or get raptured or whatever your you know situation is. Heaven is only for the righteous who walk uprightly and do works of righteousness and speak truth in their heart. 
Um, those works in the Greek has nothing to do with like actual works. There's just doing righteous um, activities. That is the works of righteousness. It is not like you have to do X number of things in order to earn something. Um, our glorification is a change in which we will have immor immortality, immortality, the same type of body as Christ and changed in temperament so that we will be who we were created to be without the aggravations of the surrounding sin of the world. Those who are indwelled by the Holy Spirit will be raised from the dead and our total bodies will be given everlasting life. As faithful Christians, we will become heirs of God and have eternal inheritance in a new heaven and a new earth. The righteous will see God. Okay, so you might be just like frustrated right now because you don't agree with that. Okay, I'm going to show you some different verses under every single category. This is every category and the language is very specific. I took a lot of time to go through the Greek version of each of these and that is why I have come to this belief, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna read through these verses real quick and um, so you have a little concept of where I got this crazy concept. <laughs> God is holy, righteous, and true, and sanctified. He can never go against that nature. God is able to make grace abound toward you, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God's goodness, forbearance, long-suffering leads to repentance, Romans 2, 4. All of his ways are justice, God of truth, and without injustices, righteousness, and upright is he, Isaiah 45, 21. For I, the Lord your God, who sanctify, consecrate you, am holy, Leviticus 21, 8. God is a just God and Savior. Isaiah 45, 21. God is a just judge, Psalm 7, 11. For the Lord our God is holy, Psalm 99, 9. And you shall not profane my holy name, but I will be sanctified among the sons of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, Leviticus 22, 32. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord, Psalm 33, 5. Oh, the depth of riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable as his judgments and his ways past finding out, Romans 11:33. Man is unrighteous because of sin. Just as through one man, one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus spread to all men, because all sinned. Romans 5, 12. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. 1 John 3, 4. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Whoever sins is from the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. 1 John 1, um, 3, 5, and 8a. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Holiness without which no one will see God. Hebrews 12.14 Do you not know that righteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? 1 Corinthians 6.9-11 The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 Why be holy? Because it is written, Be holy for I am holy. 1 Peter 1.16 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 3-4 How can a man be holy? These things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the whole world. 1 John 2, 1-2 but God demonstrated his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Romans 8, 5, 8 through 9. For he made him who knows no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. For there is one God and 
one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, 1 Timothy 2, 5 through 6. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1, through 1 verse 16. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that he was seen by Cephas and the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 6. Do men have to do anything to receive this justification? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 8 through 9. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Ephesians three seventeen. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 8 through 9. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38. How does this work? I mean, grace through faith? How does that equal legal justification? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Romans 3.26 For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Romans 5.10 for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, and whom he poured on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, and having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Titus 3, 7. But you were washed and you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, Jude 1, 1. For we have been sanctified through the offering for the body of Jesus Christ once for all, Hebrews 10, 10. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified, Acts 20, 30. And every man who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure, 1 John 3, 3. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by the faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Galatians 2.16 How then shall we live? For the love of Christ compels us that we judge thus, that as one dies for all, then all died, and he died for all, that all those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Second Corinthians five fourteen to fifteen. If indeed you heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind 
and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 4, 21 to 24. For if you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, walk as children of the light. Ephesians 5, 8 and 10 through 11. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 20. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My children, let us not love in the word or tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this we know that we are of truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. 1 John 3, 16, 19. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. And do not be conformed into this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. If you call on the Father, who judges without partiality, judges according to each one's works, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct, which you received from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as the Lamb, without blemish, without spot, for he was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and have him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. First Peter 1, 17 to 21. Living in righteousness. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Proverbs 21, 3. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Romans 6, 3-7 and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God, being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Romans 6, 13. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Romans 6, 19. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, which was talking about dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Second Timothy 2.21 Yet the righteous will hold to his way, and he who has Clean hands will be stronger and stronger. Job 17, 9. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. Because he has been born of God. 1 John 3, 6a, 7, 8b, and 9. I had to cram them together. Living in holiness. I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to your former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. First Peter 1 Peter 1.15 Be diligent to be found in him peace, without spot and blameless. Second Peter 3.14 Walking in the light. Walk as children of light, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the works of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5, 8b and 10 through 11. Um, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, John 1, 4. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and we do not practice the truth. But... If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 6 through 7. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Psalm 119, 105 and 130. Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket, under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? If, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And to who hear, more will be given. Mark 4, 21 and 23 through 25. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2, 9. Then it says, walk in wisdom. So, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer each one. Colossians 4, 5 through 6. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom in which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the lord of glory but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god no one knows the things of god except for the spirit of god first corinthians 2 7 through 8 and then 10 and 11b um, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he has accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Ephesians 3, 8 through 12. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians five fifteen. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians 5, 17. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Matthew 10, 16. Walking in the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, Romans 8, 14 and 16. Do not be drunk with wine, 
in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God, Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Do not quench the Spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Romans 8, 1. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Romans 8, 5. But if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Romans 8, 9 through 10. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled faces behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord as being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians three sixteen through 18 But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, 19 through 20. Eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, for we are saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what it sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it, with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. But now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8, 23b through 27. How does all this happen? Is it my hard work or is it the Holy Spirit? Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Though the word of God, which lives and abides forever, 1 Peter 1, 22 and 23. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of rede redemption. Ephesians 4.30 For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Ephesians 5.9 Being very confident of this thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God, Philippians 1.11. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us and by the spirit whom he has given us. 1 John 3.23 and 24 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Ephesians 3:16. Glorification and everlasting life. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, those whom he predestined, he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Romans 8, 30. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and all the dead will rise incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Romans 8, 11. But now it has been revealed by the appearing of the Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 2 Timothy 1.10 Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3.2 And if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer with him then we may also be glorified together Romans 8 17 but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God you have your fruit to holiness and to the end everlasting life Romans 6 22 but the day of the Lord will come in as a thief in the night and in which the heavens will pass away with great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up, looking for and hastening to the coming day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire, the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells, 2 Peter 3.10 and 12-13. through 13. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Philippians 3, 20 to 21. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Psalm 17, 15. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Psalm 140, 13. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who does not put out money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Psalm 15, 1 to 3. All right, do we have any responsibilities or directives required of us? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God and has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling to the world himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17-21 be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 15 and 16 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. 2 Timothy 2, 10. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, 2 Timothy 2, 1. I declare to you the gospel, which I preached to you, which you also received and in which you stand, but which you are also saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 2. You must therefore endure hardships, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 2, 4. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 7. So warnings. Hold fast to the gospel unless you believed in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, and some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, which is dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. 2 Timothy 2, 16-17 He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 John 4, 8 you, do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But that they went out, that they might be made manifest, that none of them were with us. 1 John two, nineteen. So I'm going to get into, in other lessons, more details and depths. Okay, this is just the basic verses to get us started. And then um, I'm going to get into some pretty deep stuff. So, so we can kind of zoom in and really get into the language and describe and see the process that you're um, looking at here. So if you feel like you're in check and you're good, you know, skip them. But if you feel like you want to learn more or you don't feel like you are might not be in check, then I would definitely dial in because the next lessons are like meat and potatoes. Like this is just kind of a overview. The next ones are serious meat and potatoes. So see you next time.